Welcome, welcome. This is the Enlightenment Show, and I'm your host, Laurie Schoenfeld. This is where Chicken Soup for the Soul meets The Artist's Way with Nancy Drew. Our guest today is Andrea Hunter, Master Gardener and Creative Writer. We're going to be chatting with her today all about her passions and her dream of one day owning her own goat farm. Welcome, Andrea. Oh, thank you, Lori. I'm so excited to be here. I've really been looking forward to this. So thank you for having me. You are so welcome. I'm really excited to dive in on all the beautiful things that you enjoy and also that you create. But first, before we dive in, what is your favorite season, Andrea? Oh, I don't think that's a very fair question. <laughs> I love them all. Um, I mean, there's something in every season that I think is amazing and awesome. You know, it's just the the cycle and the um, you know the the excitement of a new season beginning and then winding down. You know, like now we're winding summer down. Um, so, which makes me a little sad because, you know, I still have so much to do outside. Mm -hmm. um, but sometimes, uh, you know, where we live in the Midwest, sometimes, uh, you know, we have a very mild fall and, uh, you know, so we'll see, maybe it'll be that way. But I, I do love summer for the gardening, obviously. Um, I love winter because I love snow and just the, the peacefulness, um, you know, that comes with that. and. I mean, of course, the holidays, which I love those. Um, yeah, and I love I love spring. I love fall. I love it all. <laughs> there is a beauty in every season. Yes. Yeah. For sure. You love to garden and preserve food. Where did this passion and love for gardening first start? Oh, gosh. So... Um, I grew up basically um, in the kitchen <laughs> it, with my grandmothers, um, with my aunts, with my mom, with my dad. My dad loves to cook. Um, and you, uh, farming families, basically. Both of my parents, you know, were born on farms. Their parents had farms. Um, you know, my mom, after she was born, she and her family moved away, you know, to the to a town. Um, but my dad grew up on a farm. And so we would spend, you know, weeks during the summer staying at, um, at Grandma Hazel's and, you know, picking berries, picking fruit, um, you know, just whatever was in season. Um, and then uh, my mom's mom, I would spend, I mean, just days and hours in the kitchen with her. She, um, you know, she opened my eyes to, you know, what it's, what it means to preserve food and um, all of the different ways to do it. And, you know, each, uh... are you there? <laughs> okay. <back. laughs> um, so each, uh, you know, my mom is one of 10, my dad is one of 10. So my grandmother's, you know, it was like when you cook, you cook loads and loads of food um, and the same with preserving. And, um, you know, so it's you're packing the freezer, you're packing the, um, the uh, cellar shelves. Um, I just remember going down to um, the basement and just seeing rows and rows of green beans and beets and potatoes and stuff. And it was just, it was amazing. And so I've just, I guess I've just carried that with me all my life and it's just been such an inspiration. And, um, you know, those, those times were so special to me that I want to, you know, I want to share it with my kids. I want to share it with their kids and, you know, whoever will listen, Lori. Mm -hmm. I love how just you talking and sharing that piece was just like, you know, I could feel that memory and that connection that you have to your family, but what a legacy you're also building in that area with your family and with your own family. It's so beautiful. Oh, thank you. Thank you. What do you like to can or make the most? Do you have like a favorite or a favorite few that you go to often and enjoy? 
Um, gosh, one of one of my favorites, and I guess it's because it comes from something that I I would never touch it as a kid. You know, like we used I used to eat weird things, but like rhubarb, I would never ever. I just thought, yeah, that's gross. Um, but I grow rhubarb now, and I make rhubarb vanilla bean jelly, and everybody everybody loves it. I give it as gifts. I give it. Um, you know, to friends, like we'll swap canned goods and things. Um, but it is surprisingly one of one of my absolute favorites to to make and to share. So that sounds absolutely delicious. Is it like a jelly that like or a spread? How what's it? Yeah, yeah, like a, a jelly that you would put on on a biscuit or on toast. Um, you know, you could put it on ice cream, you can, you know, just eat it by the spoonful. Mm -hmm. It's good. What does your garden look like, Andrea? Walk us through kind of the different things that you like to grow and that are in season often that you grow. Um, well, so so we do have things that are um, perennials that we have um, berry bushes and asparagus, um, rhubarb, of course. Um, and um, some other things that just come up year after year. And those, you know, are kind of kind of along the edges, you know, sort of so that then in the center, I can just plant a, a little bit of everything else. So we have tomatoes, we have um, kale this year, the kale is just insane. So I my freezer is already pretty full of kale. Um, uh, radishes, cucumbers, different zucchini and squash, beets. Um, the beets have done really well this year, so so that's pretty exciting. Uh, and green beans. Last year, it's funny because different years, you know, it's like I could plant the same things year after year after year, and every single year you get different results. So this year, um, it's been a struggle to get the green beans to take off. So, um, you know, we've had a few here and there, but, um, but yeah, it hasn't been a great year for the green beans. The beets and kale are doing great though. So, so you learned, what are some things that you've learned about life through your garden? Mm. To have patience and to sort of just go with the flow because, you know, like I said, sometimes, you know, you're expecting, oh, this huge um, crop of green beans to come in. And then, you know, you get a handful here and there. Um, and also to anticipate the surprises, like the, the beets going just, you know, absolutely crazy. So it's, it's really, um, it's a cool metaphor for life, if you think about it, you know, hanging out in the garden. Mm -hmm. There's something about putting your hands in the soil and just being one with that piece that just organically feels so grounding and just there's a lot of metaphors that just naturally wrap into you when you're in the soil. Oh, we're back. <laughs> Next question for you, Miss Andrea. You are a creative writer. Mm -hmm. What are some of your favorite things about writing? Oh, gosh. Um, I, I just love the way I love getting things out of my head and onto paper. Cause I, I still tend to write on paper a lot. Um, I have a lot on my phone. I have a lot on my computer too, but really when I'm kind of in the flow, it's, it's on paper. Um, but I, I love it when I have something in my head and I put it down and then I walk away and I come back and I read it and I'm like, yeah, that's exactly what I meant to write. <laughs> you know, that's that's what I had in my head. That's what I was thinking, and um, you know, so that's that's one of my my favorite um, parts of the process. Mm -hmm. There's Julia Cameron says something really beautiful about how you have to catch your heart with springs mm -hmm. before they run away. Do you notice with there's a different feeling for you of putting it on paper of catching? those heart whisperings over running to the computer? Um, yeah, uh, yes, because um, 
and this might sound kind of weird, but I'll notice like if I'm trying to get it down really fast because it's something that it's just really important to me at that in that moment. And so I'll write really fast. And so you can see by my handwriting, like, oh, okay, this was a really passionate <laughs> um, <laughs> thought that that I had. So uh, so yeah, it's I, I and I like that. I like calling that a, a heart whispering because that's that's really what it is. Catching that energy and that passion mm -hmm. of your handwriting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Do you have a favorite place that you like to go and write that's a safe haven and sanctuary for your heart? Um, I mean, really, any anywhere in my home. You know, I I I love being at home. I love um, you know, and I'll I'll sit in different rooms and write. But it seems like this room, the dining room, I just feel really like at peace in here, and it's just a very calm environment. So. Um, I, I do tend to do a lot of writing in here. Is your dining room connected to your kitchen, Andrea? Um, it is. And the kitchen is that way, but I will not show you the kitchen because <laughs> it is just overflow. I even have tomatoes sitting in here on my <laughs> dining room table behind the computer. <laughs> but yeah, it's a, it's a catastrophe right now because I'm getting tomatoes all weekend. That that makes sense of you having the dining table and the dining room being a sanctuary because it's so close to the kitchen and the memories and the mm -hmm. things that you create and make. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's beautiful. I'm excited because you have um, a novel coming out that you're co-authoring yes. right now. Can you share a little bit about that with us? Yeah. So it is... Um... It's a long time in the in the making. We've been working on it for years and years and years. But um, you know, it's hard enough to write a novel on your own. You know, but when you have two people, um, you know, meshing schedules and um, you know timelines and 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 then when we do have an opportunity to sit down together and write, you know, kind of taking that time to catch back up and like, okay, here's where we are and. Um, but um, but Denise and I we have a, a you know a great partnership and a really good flow, um, and you know we always joke that we're we're two people that share the same brain because sometimes we'll look at what we've written and be like wait did you write that or did I write that I can't remember <laughs> um, because our our ideas just tend to really mesh that well um, so yeah the celestial thread it's um, I would call it magical realism. Um, because there are definitely, there's a lot of magic, um, but, but there's, there's a lot of real life, um, drama and experiences that, that happen throughout the book. So we have our two main characters, Naomi and Vi, and who literally come from two different worlds, um, and, uh, have, have their own sort of, um, sheltered existence um and then when we when we meet the characters like right in the opening of the book it's just like a, um reality as each of these women knows it sort of just explodes yeah. blows up and their lives are forever changed and then their lives become forever entwined so mm -hmm. Where did you meet your co-author on this project? Were you friends before you put the book together or how did that come to be? So we, uh, I moved um, to Illinois 17, almost exactly 17 years ago. And um, my daughter started preschool and she met this little girl and they just became thick as thieves. They were just besties from that point all all the way through high school. Um, so, you know, Denise and I met at preschool and, you know, just discovered that we have a lot in common. We share a lot of the same interests. Um, you know, we in fact, our kids uh, share names. Her, her kids have the same middle names as my 
kids' first names. It's it's really it's bizarre. So we were, you know, we always say we were destined to meet, and um, you know, so we just we, um, you know, began doing different creative projects and things. And you know, of course, as the kids went through school and working on the PTO and. Um, you know, doing the yearbook and different things like that. And then we realized, you know, like, hey, one night after book club, we're like, you know, have you ever written anything? I'm like, well, yeah. And, you know, and it was like, well, me too. Do you want to try and write together? And so we did. <laughs> I five ladies. That is so joyful to me as it reminds me when I dropped my oldest off at kindergarten, because that's such a, you know, transitional Days mm -hmm. in kindergarten for a mama, mm -hmm. like standing with another woman in solace of like letting go, right? <laughs> and then finding that creative person too that's like, hey, we're both letting go and we both are trying to find this different new piece. And hey, yes. do you do this too? Is such a bonding and connection with women, yes, yes, exactly. And it was, it was our, our baby, our youngest. You know, so it was it was even more of a, huh, OK, what do we do now <laughs> sort of thing. So. Do you guys work together over Zoom? Do you do phone calls to or do you do like one chapter and then your friend does the other chapter? How does that work? Yeah, we do. We do sort of a combination of, of all of that. Um, sometimes we will literally sit side by side in my dining room or in her dining room. And one of us will type, the other one will talk, and then we switch and, um, you know, but sometimes it's a, a matter of, okay, we're trying to finish up this chapter. I'm gonna go through and do my edits. I'll email it to her. She'll go through and do hers and then send it back. And then we find, you know, the, the common ground with it. And yeah, and, you know, lots and lots of phone calls lots of phone calls um, and lots of distractions. You know, we <laughs> we tend to <laughs> be like cats with the laser light too sometimes. <laughs> so you're like 45 minutes sitting and stand up. <laughs> hey, you want to go check out that new antique school antique store? Yeah. You know, so it's like there is something so very magical about antique stores. You're speaking one of my love languages. They're oh, so fun. Right. I love it. Love it. Do those stem creativity for you when you walk into an antique store? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Every, every little thing has, has a story. And then, um, you know, I always go straight for the books. So when you pick up a book and you open it and somebody has a picture tucked inside or they've written a message, you know, to, as, as a gift for somebody, it, it's just, it's, I just, I think there's, there's so much, you can learn so much from the books and things that you pick up at those stores. So we talked about at the beginning that you are a goat enthusiast and you one day want to own your own goat farm. Mm -hmm. Please share with us what your passion and love for goats is. Um, I mean, they're goats. They're so cute. They're little faces. <laughs> they're, just, they're just so cute. <laughs> um, but, you know, I've, I've always, you know, my parents, you know, and, and the, the having, um, you know, being in touch with the farming and, you know, my dad grew up with animals. So he, um, he always tells us the story about when he actually had a, a baby goat that was his. So this was his pet and he would bring it into the house. He would sneak it in. Um, and you know, they would, he, he would let it in his bed. They would sleep in the same bed and stuff. And, you know, grandma Hazel would just have a fit, you know, get that goat out of here, get that goat out of the house. Um, and then he just, he decided that it was time to sort of, um, I don't know, uh, let the goat stay outside after having a, a headbutting contest with it and learned that he had he had his little his little horn sprouts <laughs> so so thus ends the story of my dad and his goat um but but just really growing up hearing stories like that and um you know just it, the 
um, you know, the connection, the, the excitement, the knowing that, you know, yeah, they're farm animals, but they also serve a purpose to, you know, to feed our souls and to bring us joy. And, and I just, you know, I, I love goats. There are several farms around here that, um, that raise goats. And so, you know, I'm a, I'm a frequent visitor. <laughs> They are so energetic and joyful and their personality is just, they're so lively. <laughs> they are. They are. Yep. We're going to turn it to the inner child question segment. Are you ready, Andrea? <laughs> okay. As a kid, what was one of your favorite things to watch grow? Hmm. Okay, so there. this is something that we did not grow, but I watched them and I have never ever forgotten this. Um, when I was probably in the first and second grade, we had a neighbor and she was, this, it was a sweet little old lady. Her, her name was Hazel, like my grandmother. Um, and she, between our house and her house was this row of, of flowers and vines and things. And um, she had these flowers that were called, she called them, I don't know what the actual name of them is, but she called them nine o'clocks. And every evening throughout the summer, we would go, we would meet Hazel between our yards and she would say, oh, are you ready? We're gonna watch the nine o'clocks. And you would actually get to watch the blooms open and they were these beautiful yellow flowers. And I just thought that was the most amazing thing to see because, you know, otherwise you don't see, a, you don't witness a flower blooming, you know, but that was, that was pretty cool. So I'd have to say, yeah, the nine o'clocks. The magic hour. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Plus, as a kid, being able to stay up until nine o'clock, that was cool. Mm -hmm. That was an extra perk for mm -hmm. sure. <laughs> as a teen, what scent reminded you of home? As a teen? Mm -hmm. um, so probably, probably two things. So, um, my mom always wore white shoulders perfume. So while I am, I, I cannot, I am, I perfume and I do not get along. I cannot, I can't use it. I can't wear it. I can't smell it. If I walk into a store and they're like spritzing it, I'm like, no, 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 no. <laughs> you know, um, Because it, you know, I get headaches and stuff, but for, for, for some reason, you know, white shoulders would always, you know, that was the one scent I could, you know, that always brought me back home. Um, that and um, a, a pot of brown beans on the stove. So if, um, you know, my dad was always like Sundays were, that was his day to cook. Um, and he would just, you know, all day long, he would be in the kitchen and, you know, being from Kentucky, beans was a, you know, a popular, you know, that's what he grew up with. And um, and now whenever we go home or whenever he comes to visit, we're like, oh, dad, can you make a pot of brown beans? But just the smell of the, you know, chopping the onions and the garlic and and the, all of the good stuff that goes into it and then smelling it simmer on the on the stove all day long. Mm -hmm. That that would always remind me of home. Mm -hmm. I can smell it now andrea <laughs> right there with you what is the oddest food combo that you've liked and tried or you've just tried um i am definitely like a sweet and savory person so like chicken and waffles which is isn't that odd anymore i guess um you know like i dump syrup on my bacon and sausage that's mm -hmm. um pork chops and applesauce um, and let's see, one thing that I've done recently is, um, strawberries with basil. 
on on toast on cream cheese and toast and then drizzle honey over it so that's that's a that was different for me that was something that i really enjoy um but but there is one thing that i never i can honestly say i've never tried this and i still to this day don't think i would um but my my grandma my mom's mom um which it would today would be her 95th birthday if she were still with us. So happy birthday, grandma. Um, yeah, so so I feel bad that I'm saying, ew, this was so gross, but, <laughs> but she would totally understand. Um, it's called tomato aspic and it is tomato. It's like a, it's almost like a Bloody Mary mixed with jello. So it's, yeah. <laughs> I could not, but it was, um, gosh, years ago. Like that was, that was the thing. It was like, and not like flavored jello, you know, it was just like a flavorless gelatin that you would make. Um, and it had, you know, I think it had celery and different spices and seasonings and tomato juice in it. And it would be, um, you know, on this little bed of lettuce and this blob of, um, tomato jello so those two do not go together for me <laughs> i agree on my end um, <laughs> yes the toast with this cream cheese and the basil that actually sounds and the strawberries that sounds mm -hmm. so inviting to me is the basil like do you put it over the cream cheese and then put the strawberries on it or do you put the basil like as a spread together um i mean you could do it like that for sure you could mix it in with your cream cheese and then spread it on but um i just do it i just put the cream cheese on my toast and then layer the strawberries on and um cut some basil out of my pots on the back porch and um you know just put some little ribbons on it and then drizzle the honey over top and it is it's really good Highly recommend. Do you have a name for that, Andrea? Um, I don't. I don't. But I, I did find it's not my recipe. I did find it on Pinterest. So I don't want to make people think that <laughs> I came up with this wild, brilliant idea, but no. We have a few people that came in to say hi. Oh. Hello, Elizabeth. Thank you so much for coming today. Hi. And we're so glad to have you here as well. So That's glad so to sweet. bump into this. <laughs> Before we end today, Andrea, what yes. advice can you give our listeners and viewers on living a creatively abundant life? Well, I would have to say, um, so for me, you know, as, as human beings, you know, we're, we're born to create. So the, what I think is cool about that is that, you know, we can either choose, we can choose to create chaos and drama, or we can choose to create joy. And while I'm sure I've created my fair share of chaos and drama, <laughs> um, you know, I just, I really try and, and create joy in, in whatever it is that I'm doing. And that sort of serves as like the spark for everything else. Because if you if you have joy, if you feel joyful, then, you know, you can, um, you know, everything else is a little easier, I guess. So. Thank you so much for being here with us. And Angel says, we love you, Annie. Thank you, Angel. Aww. That's my, that's my bestie from New Jersey. Thanks for joining us today. Where can our listeners and viewers find you, Andrea, if they have any questions at all about your project that's coming up and then also what you're doing and creating right now in the world? Sure. Um, so Instagram is probably where I'm most accessible and that's um, andrea.hunter3, I'm pretty sure. Andrea.hunter3. <laughs> And then uh, I have a website and it's andreahunterwrites.com. 
And from there, you can see some of the things that I've written. Um, you can see uh, there's, I have a link to um, my other website with Denise, which is the celestial thread.com. Um, so you can get to that either, either through my website or directly and, and follow us there. Thank you so much for bringing joy and love, creativity into our lives and being with us today, Andrea. And before we end, happy birthday to your grandma for bringing you here and we'll blow out the candles together. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. On the count of three, okay. one, two, three. Happy birthday, Andrea's grandma. Oh, you are you are precious. Thank you so much, Lori. This is just and as you have brought so much joy to into my life. So I, I'm grateful for that and I appreciate that. Much love to you, beautiful friend. Right Thank you for all those who have joined us today. Remember, as you're going about your week to find the things that are working around you. You are the creator of your own story. What kind of story are you going to write? Have a beautiful rest of your day. We will see you right here at 12 o'clock p.m. Mountain Standard Time on Thursday with Jared Kwan. Have a good day, everyone. Thank you, Andrea. Thanks, Lori.